Hi, how are you? My name is Angel. Today's video is the first in a series um, that I'm starting on my channel that I'll be calling Perfume 101, which will be kind of a guide to fragrance. I find that I often get questions in my comments and my DMs on Instagram um, around the more technical side of perfume land. Uh, a lot of the jargon that I use might be a bit foreign to some of you guys if you're just getting into fragrance and into fragrance collecting and I thought that it might be good to do a series of videos explaining a few of the ins and outs uh, of fragrance. I am by no means an expert. I'm just a woman that really, really, really enjoys fragrance. I have done a lot of reading, a lot of research over the years and I do know a little sound song, but again, I'm no expert. <laughs> I will refer you to uh, a few links in the description box um, to people that I do consider to be experts uh, and I welcome you to read those blogs. They are blogs. I don't think I'll be linking anyone on YouTube. I might be. Let's visit the links below. Um, but if you would like to hear me talk about a few of the more uh, frequently used terms in this video, then stay tuned. Now, I have a number of fragrances um, sitting next to me that I'll be using for example sake. Please note that these are just examples. They aren't the rule, okay? I just need that to be quite clear. All right, I'll start with um, the term longevity. You'll often hear me talk about the longevity of a fragrance. Um, and that really just means what it means in daily English. How long does something last? Um, typically, I don't get um, quite a dramatic longevity out of my fragrances. Some people's skin t tends to eat up fragrance more than other people's skin. Uh, typically, if you have more oily skin, fragrance will last longer on your skin than if you have drier skin. There are ways to correct that. There is a product by uh, a company called Concrete and Canvas, a canvas of concrete, something like that, which is a fragrance primer and it's oil based. And what it does is, is it increases the longevity of fragrance by creating kind of a film of oiliness on your skin. You can do the same thing with Vaseline or um, I guess olive oil or coconut oil, though I tend to really shy away from um, scented oils for doing that. But what longevity is, is just how long a fragrance lasts, period. You'll, tell, you'll typically get um, greater longevity from fragrances with, with more of a perfume oil concentration in them. Second, sillage. What is sillage? Sillage is a French word, S-I-L-L-A-G-E, uh, sillage, and it means how far a fragrance will spread, the throw of the fragrance, how much room will it occupy, how far ahead of you is it. I typically tend to like a fragrance with an arm's length sillage, so it gives me about that much. You can smell me from about here. Uh, if I sat next to you in a car, you would smell me. Some fragrances have a much closer sillage, it plays quite close to the skin, that's what I mean. When I say something plays close to the skin, it, it means that you'd have to maybe hug me um, to smell that fragrance on me. Some fragrances are bombs, where if I was sitting in the room, you could smell me from outside the room. Uh, some fragrances are uh, average where generally I think arm's length is a good average. That's typically what I like to achieve with my fragrance arm's length I often can fill a room um, Depending on on application typically sillage will depend on again how much uh, uh, Perfume oils the fragrance contains uh, or the, the concentration of perfume oil uh, also application um, two sprays will give you less sillage than 10 sprays in general um, there are fragrances that are a bit stubborn where you could really keep going and not get much else uh, much more sillage from them but that's quite rare uh, not quite rare it's rare but it happens um, and also it might uh, be a question of anosmia which is my third word anosmia anosmia refers to the phenomenon where uh, your nose just stops being able to detect a fragrance. This may happen for a number of reasons. If you wear the same fragrance every single day or year round, you may become anosmic to it. What it means is that you stop being able to smell it. It's kind of the same thing as how people can't really smell their own BO or can't quite smell the smell of their house. You know how everybody's house has a smell? But you can't, you can't smell the smell of your house. <laughs> Your house has a smell though, I can guarantee it. <laughs> um, anosmia uh, can come from being used to a fragrance, quote unquote. So other people will be able to smell your fragrance, but you might feel like you can't really smell anything. That's one reason. Another thing, but 
could be that you might be anosmic to a certain note um, in the fragrance. I'm generally anosmic to um, water lily and, uh, and uh, orchid. I can't typically smell uh, those notes. Lotus as well is something quite difficult for me to detect. I, I, I just, I, I can't smell them. Even if you gave me the actual flower, I, 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 can't, I can't smell them. They just, they don't hit me. Um, in some fragrances, some combinations create anosmia for me. Um, typically, uh, I will not be able to detect sandalwood with a white floral. For some reason, I will only smell the flower. I can't smell the wood. Uh, I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> but yeah, typically, anosmia will result from being quite accustomed to smelling a fragrance or just being unable to smell that fragrance, period. Some people taste soap in, um, in coriander and other people don't. And it, 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 you can't really explain it. It's kind of like that. Anosmia. Okay, having said that, let me get into the difference between different kinds of fragrances um, in terms of their concentration. Eau de toilette, eau de parfum, parfum, extrait, eau de cologne. You hear those fragrances, uh, those terms thrown around in, in, in reference to fragrances. And I just wanted to quickly, quickly mention uh, that there is a scale in terms of what uh, or, or how concentrated a fragrance uh, will be depending on its description. For the most part, uh, Eau de Cologne will have very little fragrance or comparatively uh, a low amount of uh, fragrance oils. And then you have your Cologne, and then you have your Eau de Toilette, and then you have your Eau de Parfum, and then you have your Parfum, and then you have your Extrait. That's the general rule. Your Extrait will have a really high concentration, up to 40% in some fragrances, and your Eau de Cologne will have like 7% in some fragrances and that's the scale so generally what you hear the most is eau de toilette and eau de parfum eau de toilette will have a lower concentration of fragrance oils than eau de parfum will what does that mean in a practical sense that typically generally an eau de parfum will be quote unquote stronger than an eau de toilette you will get better performance out of an eau de parfum than you will an eau de toilette is the general rule i have two fragrances with me here uh, number five by Chanel, numéro 5. Uh, this is the Eau de Toilette and this is the Eau de Parfum. I get a longer uh, uh, or a higher longevity from the Eau de Parfum. Uh, I get about seven, eight hours from the Eau de Parfum where I get about five, six hours max uh, from the Eau de Toilette. For me, my hours will mean where does it start to disappear, where even if I have... <laughs> half my wrist, I can't smell it. Uh, that will happen around the five to six hour mark with a toilette and around the seven to eight hour mark with a parfum. In terms of throw, I don't find that there is a difference. My eau de toilette and my eau de parfum from Chanel number no. five are about the same in terms of throw. I get about arm's length, roughly. Um, you can smell me in the car. Uh, so that, that difference isn't there. The difference with these two is uh, uh, in the longevity. Now, some fragrances tend to disappear quite quickly uh, in terms of sillage. So you'll have quite a, an impressive sillage when you first put them on, uh, where you're maybe filling a room or filling a car, and then within two hours they've dropped off to what is called a skin scent. What is a skin scent? A skin scent is uh, either that a fragrance is designed to be like this or wears down to this, where you can only smell it quite close to the skin skin scent uh, at that point it will have really kind of made friends with your skin and so you'll be smelling both skin and the scent and skin scent um, that happens to me a lot with very musky fragrances an example is narciso by narciso rodriguez i have two here this is the narciso the original the original in the white cube with the nude uh, cap and this is narciso pulver which is a more pink uh, packaging both of these dry down quite quickly to skin scent level for me i get skin scent at about three to four hours with the original and about the fifth uh, hour with um with the poudre from there they will last quite long but very close to the skin um, i could get easily nine hours with both of these fragrances but quite close to the skin you would have to hug me to know what i'm wearing or that i'm wearing fragrance but the last they last quite long as opposed to 
say a Chanel number no. five or a toilette, which by six hours is pretty much gone. You would smell me and not really know that I had any fragrance on. Again, that might be because I have quite dry skin, um, so I can't I can't do a full day with just um, Chanel number no. five or the toilette. I will need to touch up. Uh, whereas this will do a full day. It's just that by the end of the day, this will be very much a skin scent on me. You may be able to smell me in the car uh, or if you're sitting right next to me in a meeting room, but you, you, if I walked by you, you'd maybe catch it in the air, but you really wouldn't be able to know maybe by standing right in front of me that I'm wearing a fragrance. So that's that. Typically, I find those kind of fragrances to be very um, office friendly in that you smell nice when you walk past people, when you sit next to people in the in the office, but you don't, you know, you're not gassing everyone to death. A good pick for the office. All right, niche. <laughs> this one is debatable in terms of what it means. There are two um, meanings or two schools of thought as to what a niche fragrance is. Typically, uh, a niche fragrance as opposed to a designer fragrance or um, a drugstore fragrance and maybe I'll, I'll start by explaining what designer is designer is a fragrance that is made by a fashion design house so Gucci which started as a fashion design house then makes fragrance that's a designer fragrance Chanel which started as a uh, fashion design house then makes fragrance that's called a designer fragrance niche fragrances uh, have the distinction of having uh, come from companies that are established to make fragrance. Guerlain is a good example. Guerlain, the house, is very, very old. This is Charlemagne Parfum Initial from Guerlain. Uh, they have been making fragrance since, I think, the 17th century. Uh, and they started as a perfume house. So that's one description of what a niche fragrance is. It comes from a house that was established to make fragrance. Um, another description is that the house that makes a fragrance only makes fragrance. That's true of fragrances like these. These are from Mansara. The house of Mansara only makes fragrance. Um, so that's all they do. Their niche in the market is fragrance. This is a uh, Velvet Vanilla and Roses Veni by Mansara. That's all this company does is fragrance. Now, you do have um, designer houses coming up with separate lines um, of their products that are meant to be niche-like. For instance, you have Tom Ford, which started as a fashion house and then made fragrance, which is their signature collection. This is Black Orchid. This is a designer fragrance by Tom Ford. Then you have fragrances like Noir de Noir, which is from Tom Ford's private collection, and these are designed by a fragrance house, but uh, are said to be more artisanal, more creative, less uh, about the money and more about the art of fragrance. Uh, and those houses will be those lines will be the exclusive lines of those fragrance houses. So. That is why they attach such a high price point to them because they're supposed to be quite artistic fragrances um, from these uh, lines. So people argue that the general, the, the designer line from a house like Tom Ford, like your Black Orchid is meant to be mass market, um, accessible. You can get these for under, I think the 30 mil will cost you under $100. The 100 mil will cost you under $200. Um, meant to appeal to the mass. Uh, the masses, whereas your exclusive line, this is Noir de Noir by Tom Ford, higher end and more artistic, more deliberate, more about the art of making fragrance, which will cost you, this is 50 mil and goes for about $250. The theory behind that I think is debatable. I think um, typically the designer houses are quite... Uh, driven by the bottom line so it's hard to separate the business from the art of fragrance I think that my perception of niche is a fragrance that is made by a house that only exists to make fragrance um, and that is willing to push the envelope um, a house that like Mansara for me I would consider niche because all they do is fragrance they exist to make fragrance they make they're made by someone that is passionate just about fragrance as an art if they're able to sell it great do you know what I mean? It's less driven by the 
financial bottom line um, and much more driven by the art of fragrance. Niche is a very debatable top topic, but generally it, it, it refers to fragrances that are not designer. So not created by, by fashion designer houses. Lancome as well is another example. Lancome has their typical uh, fragrances. You have your Trésor, your Poem, uh, and then you have Maison Lancome, which exists to be their niche like or niche adjacent uh, collection of fragrances. This is the fragrance from Maison Lancome. Again, you'll find that the hallmarks of a niche line by a designer house is that it will be much more expensive, but you will see that in the production value, you'll get much more thoughtful packaging, much more expensive packaging. Um, you can often ten tell by the quality of the, the fragrance, you get much more impressive performance. I wouldn't con compare the, the performance of this fragrance to anything in their regular line. Um, you can't compare this to like a Murac or a La Nuit Trésor at all. The, even by smelling it, you smell the quality. So there is that to be said. Uh, but again, I think that designer houses tend to be led by the bottom line because a lot of them are, are owned by huge conglomerates. You have your LVMH, you have your Prestige, you have your Coty, um, who or your Estée Lauder, who will be setting targets for these people. So it's less uh, about the art and more about what we can sell. I'll say that. I'll stop talking. So I think that's enough for this video. I'm thinking in my next installment of Perfume 101, I would like for you guys to um, ask me questions, or, uh, perfume related questions. I was thinking about doing a video describing your different types of fragrances, your fragrance groups. So your floral, your fresh, your aquatic, your aromatic, your balsamic, uh, woody, spicy, uh, that kind of thing, sweet, gourmand that kind of thing. Uh, let me know if you would like for me to do that. And again, any fragrance questions that you might have uh, that you would like for me to dedicate a Perfume 101 video to, please leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to do that. I just think that this would be nice to create in the, in, in the space on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Um, I think that's it. God bless you. Love you. Mean it. Bye. That was a very long time without a sip of wine. Mm. It's fantastic. <laughs>